Well, ladies and gentlemen, today is one of those days where I go into a video creation and I think to myself, I know exactly the answers that I'm going to give. I'm going to rate every single NPC guild. I'm going to tell you which ones are the best, which ones are the worst. And then I think to myself, well, I made a video the other day. Let me see what other people's thoughts are. And then I realize that people's thoughts are very uh, scattered in that everyone has different opinions. So I thought, well, let me, let me check, you know, the Googles. Let me do some more background research, you know. Which guilds do people like the most? Which NPC guilds are people, you know, I love this one. I hate this one. This one has a lot of utility. This one doesn't do jack shit. And then I realized that everyone has very different opinions. So it's not for me to tell you what's right and what's wrong. But what I am going to do in this video, instead of rating them on which ones you need to join versus which ones you should join, which was my original video, I'm actually just going to kind of tell you the pros and cons about joining each individual one, which DLCs you may or may not need. Is it a pain in the ass to level? And what's the benefit to leveling it up? Because I think that instead of me telling you how you should feel, I'm just going to provide you the information and then you can feel however you want. Hopefully your feelings will lead you to like the like button, but you know, it's not for me to tell you what, you know, how to feel. So, but please feel the like button, ideally with your mouse cursor, but let's jump into it. And we're going to do this in order of base game first. Uh, that way, you know, everyone has access to these first ones and you guys can have the most juiced information first at the beginning of the video. That way, you know, you get all the good information first. So we actually start with the Fighters Guild, which you can join by going to any of the starter zones, walking into the Fighters Guild and being like, hey, I'm ready to join. And they're like, you son of a bitch, you're in. That's 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 literally the whole quest line. And what's really nice about the Fighters Guild is it is exceptionally easy to level. But you might be thinking to yourself, what is the main benefit to leveling the Fighters Guild? Now, that depends on the type of gameplay that you're playing. For example, if you're doing PvE content, Trap Beast is one of the most useful skills that you can have. Um, if you like questing, Intimidation can also make questing easier can help make you skip options it can also give you exclusive rewards during certain quest lines too but more often than not it lets you skip some gobbledygook um slayer three it's going to depend on what other skills you're running this does pair great though with dawnbreaker if you're into pvp we'll talk about that skill here in a minute um banish the wicked is just great when you generating ultimate whenever you kill an enemy is great skill tracker um pretty good too um, it also works against players who are both vampires and werewolves, which is very helpful. And the bounty hunter, which allows you to accept bounty quests inside of Cyrodiil. Those are pretty neat. Um, what's really nice, though, I think, in my opinion, is Dawnbreaker. Because Dawnbreaker is just a hard-hitting ultimate that is super cost-efficient. 106 ultimate, and you can hit somebody over the... Whack them over the head with 15,930 physical damage. And then an additional 19,113 damage over six seconds. And you stun them. Overall, amazing skill. One of my favorite ones. And the best part about the fighter skill. Because you know we're going to talk about the mage's guild next. All you have to do is just play the game. Essentially. You just level up the fighter's guild just by killing undead things passively. It is super easy. If you level up in the Alakir Desert. If you go to Skyreach. If you go to the Necropolis, if you pretty much do any thing where you're killing enemies, you're going to be leveling up your fighters. Hell, if you go to battlegrounds and you're killing werewolves because every one of their moms is either a vampire or a werewolf half the time, you're still going to be leveling up your fighters guild. They're just going to pump you with fighters guild experience. It is one of the most worthwhile guilds to join. Every character you have should join the fighters guild, in my opinion. I mean, you literally walk in and you're in, so, and then you just passively level it up. So, join the Fighter's Guild, in my opinion. I think it is honestly a great skill for every player. All right, it's the Mage's Guild. Now, it's very similar to the Fighter's Guild. You basically walk across the street and you're like, hey, man, I just joined the Fighter's Guild. And they're like, whoa, you're overqualified already. Join the Mage's Guild. Um, and you're in, essentially. It's that simple. However, Unfortunately, you're going to have to follow around in the overworld and there'll be like books, you know, scattered across the lands. Uh, but you pick those up to level up the, the Mage's Guild. And unfortunately, you don't even see these books until you're in the Mage's Guild, which means that you've probably just been walking past books that are not in the overworld because you haven't joined the Mage's Guild yet. So let's talk a little bit about skills. Now, I personally 
have used the mages guild um i use them for pvp purposes however uh this skill here entropy and its morphs is pretty good for pve purposes unfortunately uh passive will is another great thing it's very similar to the fighters guild version of it where you can skip parts of certain quest lines which is always great because they might be like hey man can you just go up uh, pick up these three frog legs, you know, to earn my trust. And you're just like, how about I just persuade you instead? And I don't have to go and spend five minutes doing that. And they're like, okay, cool. Here's the, here's the end of that quest. Uh, but the main reason that people like to use the mages guild, in my opinion, is for mages, adept, um, everlasting magic, magic, magica controller, as well as might of the guild. Now, unfortunately, might of the guild is only going to affect heavy attacks against monsters not people but when you consider things like inner light which while slotted you can get not only uh major savagery and prophecy you also can get a max magicka buff by five percent and you can stack that with the ability to get an extra max mag max mag recovery uh, for everyone slotted and you can throw on things like ice comet to have a cheap ultimate well cheap cheap ultimate um to give you that magicka buff and you can throw on something like inner light to just give yourself oogles amounts of magicka however this is definitely much more of like a niche way to do it i do think the inner light though is still very good um because it is going to be able to pull people out as well as give you some passive buffs and max magicka so i do think that the mages guild is worth it however you may notice that i am not on pc because my overlay looks like this um, it doesn't have like 50 bajillion things on top of it. Uh, like here's my DPS numbers. Here's the quest I'm working on. Here's, you know, the, 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 the parsing, you know, active parsing, blah, 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 going on on the side and everything like that. I have the nice clean UI. I like to just admire how ESO looks. Um, and I like to live a peaceful life like Thanos after the uh, end to end game. Um, but that does make it very hard. I can't just download an add on that shows me where all the books are. Because if you have that add-on, it becomes significantly easier to do the Mages Guild and level it up. If you don't have that add-on, you have to do these things like watch YouTube videos and pff, who wants to do that? And then follow that route and pick up all the books. Uh, you can also do the Mages Guild and you could also, in theory, do the Fighters Guild daily. You'll be able to find those inside your Alliance War Capital. You don't have to actually go to your specific Alliance Capital. Uh, but you could go here, for example, do the Mages Guild daily quest, and you would get a chunk of Mages Guild XP. Uh, you could do that once per day. Also levels up your companion's Mages Guild level. Uh, and if you did the Fighter's Guild version, you'd level up your companion's Fighter's Guild level. You get a chunk of Fighter's Guild XP. Generally not worth doing for the Fighter's Guild version because time-wise, you could just get a bunch more Fighter's Guild XP by doing other things. But Mages Guild ones can be very varied depending on if you have add-ons or not. Overall, I do unfortunately like the Mage's Guild, and I do put it on most of my characters, sadly. Next up, we have the Undaunted, which is going to be just outside your major war capital. You are also going to be invited here at level 45, which I definitely encourage you guys to take that quest and do, because you will get a free key just for showing up. Now, is the Undaunted correct for you? And the answer is almost certainly yes. They're great for people who love PvE content, like tanking. They're great for people who like to throw out synergies. They're great for people who like to activate synergies. And regardless pretty much of what you're doing, you're going to need to have these two passives because PvP, there's gonna be synergies. PvP, synergies. Undaunted Metal, if you're, do you want higher stats? Probably. That's pretty pretty universally enjoyed. I would like more health and magicka and stamina, so that's going to be the just helpful for everybody. So, unfortunately, they have changed how you level up the Undaunted, so I will put that on screen here for you. The biggest highlights, though, is, is that it is now worth it to do pretty much pledges as well as dungeon quests. Um, you can see that they've changed the way that you get experience for these. It used to be tied to achievements. However, because achievements have been normalized, uh, mostly amongst all your characters. Um, they've retweaked how to level up the Undaunted. So, what are my suggestions? My suggestions are just to continue to do the pledges. If you're able to do the one from Mr. Redbeard over here, he's going to give you the easiest ones. He's going to give you the Cupcake Dungeons. 
you know, he's going to give you the normal base game ones such as Fallenfell, which even on veteran hard mode is very easy. Uh, Maj is going to give you something very similar. Uh, sometimes hers can be a little bit deceptively more difficult because some of the two dungeons like Eden Hollow are a little bit more tricky. Uh, but if you're able to do those on veteran hard mode, you're going to get not only double keys, but you're also going to get more undaunted experience. And again, nothing wrong with doing them on normal. Nothing wrong with just doing them on veteran, especially if you're trying to collect a monster's helmet. Because if you're queuing for these dungeons, chances are a lot of other people will be also. And then you got Urgrok who's going to give you the shitty ones that you're probably not going to want to do on hard mode, such as Lair of Marsalak, which I would not suggest doing on hard mode with a bunch of randoms because you'll probably grow gray hair and want to rip your hair out. But overall, I think that the keys that they give are worth tons of gold. The actual experience that they give, the fact that you're get, they're getting you guys out there to do some more PvE content, the fact that it's, you know, it's team building exercises, you know, go out there, be a family with your friends, make some new friends, you know, learn that people fake you way too often as tanks and healers, and, you know, just enjoy yourself. The individual who designed the Mages Guild said, hold my beer. I'm going to make something that people are going to want to hate to level up even more. And you know what we're talking about. We are talking about the Sigic Order. Now, the Sigic Order is actually one of the more easy guilds to join uh, because all you have to do is progress the Somerset storyline, which is a DLC storyline, um, but it is tied to a chapter. So if you bought any of the Elite or Deluxe versions of ESO, you probably have the Somerset expansion. Once you get into the second quest, you're going to join the Sigic Order. Should you join the Sigic Order? And this is one of those times where I say, unfortunately, probably. Now, you can see that I personally use Temporal Guard. I think having a really good defensive back bar for PvP purposes is fairly helpful. And while slotted, you gain minor protection, reducing your damage taken by 5%. However, a lot of the actual items here are very good, such as Ellie Weapon is very good for both PvE and PvP content. Channeled Acceleration gives you access to a speed up, which can be great for classes that don't normally have those. Mend Wounds is pretty good for healing. Meditate is meh. Uh, but their passives are really good also. Now, what I would encourage you guys to do is even if you have no intentions of using any of these skills or passives is to still join the Sigic Order so that you can get See the Unseen because Sigic portals are pretty juiced when it comes to being able to loot them and get into those really nice um, portals, essentially. They're going to get access to some really good items, and it's free. You'll see them every so often. You'll be able to pick them up if you have this passive. Um, and these other ones are tied very much to the actual Sigic Order themselves. However, Spell Orb is going to go really great with things such as Ellie Weapon and Consecrated Barrier is a really good PvP backbar skill because it's going to give you access to a free damage shield, um, which is going to recharge after 10 seconds. Um, and Deliberation, while you are casting or channeling a Sigic Order ability, your damage it's going to be reduced by 30%, which can also be really good with things such as Ellie Weapon um, and or Channeled Acceleration, depending on what you're doing, um, because these a lot of times have do cast durations, channels, etc., such as Time Stop. However, it is not as necessary as something such as the Undaunted. Now, it's not terrible to level up with a guide. It is just more tedious than anything else. Um, it is not as bad as the Mages Guild books because everything that you're going to need is in more of a fixed location versus Mages Guild books are pretty much just in every zone ever. And you'll get access to a skull that you can talk to if you're ever bored and want to have someone to talk to in your house. Uh, overall, I do like the Sigic Order. Leveling it, unfortunately, however, is a bit of a pain in the ass. Next, we have the reason that I completely rechanged how I was going to do this video. We're in the Gold Coast because we are here to talk about the Dark Brotherhood. The Dark Brotherhood, when I was looking up online polls, was actually rated as people's favorite NPC guild. And I thought to myself, what? Why? What? what? It's got... What? what? But then I thought about it, and I thought that, you know, when the... When, you know, things like the Fighters Guild, you know, leveling them up, it's just... It doesn't really change the game in a overworld experience. It really is limited to PvP and that PvE content, dungeons, trials, etc. Versus something like the Blade of Woe, which is just a cool item to have. Like being able to assassinate 
you know, NPC targets and steal from them and, you know, getting a lot of interesting perks is, is, is admittedly kind of cool. And then I was like, you know, I understand people just enjoy fun to level up NPC lines. They just enjoy that being able to basically see the game in a new perspective, like essentially a criminal. Um, but you're going to get access to the Blade of Woe. Now, what's nice is, and what I would suggest joining it, because I was always going to suggest that you guys join the Dark Brotherhood, not necessarily take the time to level it up, is being able to assassinate somebody um, is very helpful. Uh, sometimes you can actually assassinate bosses, uh, depending on what you're doing. However, that is fairly limited. Um, it's just nice. And you get it after the first zone story quest inside of the Gold Coast. So head on down here and get that regardless. Scales of Pitless Justice. Uh, it's going to help you reduce your heat. Um, and that's just going to give you major expedition after you kill someone with the Blade of Woe. Shadowy Supplier is okay. It is needed, however, for some of the mythicals in the game, such as the Gaze of Sithis. Shadow Rider, um, I guess, can be helpful um, in some sort of overland sense. And in Cyrodiil, maybe, if you're running past trolls and stuff every so often. Then a 15% chance to be shrouded when you use the Blade of Woe. Um basically making you be able to be unwitnessed now what i would say is is that leveling this isn't horrible um it's not like the psychic order of the mages guild where you're going to grow gray hair but i would say is it's also not overtly fun because you still have to do daily quests in the meantime to level up to the point where you can get that new main story mission which is going to be tied basically to the overworld uh zone story quest of the gold coast you can see that there's 11 out of 11 that's what it's, how many there's going to be in total. It's a pretty fun storyline. It is enjoyable. It's not as monotonous to level up, but I would say you're still going to have to do a healthy chunk of daily assassinations and other such things to actually get to the point where you can do it. You do get some good polymorphs. You do get access to a really nice uh, cadaverous assassin um, polymorph as well as some nice outfits for doing the Dark Brotherhood, but that's all going to be flavorful things based on if you want those items. This is really not going to determine if you need, you know, to level up a character to make sure that they have, you know, this stat line that's going to be good for doing trials or things. I would suggest that you get the one on all of your characters that you actively play on, and then you should level them up all the way on one character. That way you can unlock all the outfits because those outfits will then be across all your characters should you wish to use them as well as other such titles and achievements and things but overall it's still very fun and i'm glad that you guys actually marked this as your favorite one um, because it kind of made me rethink how i wanted to do this video and the final guild for us to talk about is of course the thieves guild very similar to its brother the dark brotherhood um, its achievements and its zone story progression is actually tied to the actual guild itself so if you own the Hughes Bane expansion, you're going to get access to the Thieves Guild and you're going to get access to heists as well as some other flavorful things. So this is one of those things where I think that it can be really nice to have on one character, um, but you may not need it on all of them. Now, where I would generally encourage you guys to do this on all of your characters, such as the Dark Brotherhood, pick up the Blade of Well, because if you ever plan to assassinate anybody or you ever need to just be able to kill somebody. Um, you really don't need Thieves Guild on all of your characters with some sporadic exceptions. Now, being able to do things like reduce your bounty, uh, sell stolen items for a higher rate, basically tell the guards that you know you want to speak to their manager um, and you're, they're going to let you go for another minute, have timely escape and Veil of Shadows are certainly okay. The real only real big one here, I think, is haggling. Um, and the time it's going to take for you to level up the haggling is just not going to be worth it, in my opinion, because while the Thieves Guild is great, it's not Ledgermend where you're going to be able to sell things like more stolen items, which is really what I think is more important. The big draw to doing the Thieves Guild and having the Thieves Guild, as well as the skills associated with it and the Dark Brotherhood, is the heist board. I think that heists are a great daily quest that are highly underrated by most people. I think the rewards that they give are fairly decent as well as the set items, the motives, and everything that come from them. And a lot of people don't farm them, so it could be a decent money maker for you to go out and do personally. However, 
You don't need to do that on multiple characters. The Thieves Guild can be a pain in the ass to level up because it's going to send you out into the overworld, steal a bunch of items, rob a bunch of people. They can be very tedious to level up. It does have some really nice titles. It has some really nice furnishing items and things attached to it. So I'd encourage you guys to do it on one character, but you certainly do not need to do this on every single character. But that is going to wrap it up. Would you guys like a video that's dedicated more so to the other pieces, such as Ledgerman, Soul Magic, Excavation, Scrying, etc.? Um, if you guys would like more videos dedicated to that, let me know. I wanted to focus specifically on the NPC guilds, though, because I didn't really see a lot of information on it personally. And I always feel like I'm defending things like buying things in medium if you're using a heavy and light already. So I thought, well, we'll make a video kind of explaining my thoughts on the guilds. Originally, obviously, I plan to rate them. Um, but I think that with everyone being so different, you know, I think that it's much more fair for me to tell you and say, you know, this may be right for you based on how you're playing ESO versus you may not need to focus on this. You know, you may have other things that are, you know, just more timely and better for you to focus on. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. We are still doing our three giveaway drawings, which I forgot to post the winners on the last videos. Please don't excommunicate me. Uh, but to enter, all you have to do is A, leave a comment. Every single comment that is left on every single video uh, is entered into a drawing, which will be April 1st at midnight. Um, the second entry, second winner, will be the funniest comment that made me laugh in the moment. Obviously, please don't feel like you have to make a funny comment. Every comment is helpful. Um, and my sense of humor is also so random that sometimes your comments are just naturally way more funny than they than you probably intend them to be. And the third one is a random subscriber. So by subscribing and commenting, you are entered automatically. And just by keeping that subscription going, you're not only helping me become more credible uh, when it comes to negotiating with Zenimax and being like, you know, my stream team application is still out there, Zenimax. You know, feel free to, you know, to ponder it over maybe you want to send me a letter you know i was pretty close you know when it came you know to guessing i was, I was almost basically on the money with guessing the new class in the new zone you know you could send me a letter i wouldn't mind you know i could, I could give you my address uh but i do appreciate all of you guys for stopping over i appreciate you guys for watching to the end of this, this is a long one and i will catch you guys later bye guys you better remember to like and subscribe to jake clips Oh, you should. I might have to pluck your eyes if you don't. Or, better yet, I'll skip rope with your entrails. Do it now. Subscribe. Ta-ta. Off with you. For the post-outro people, just know that I am going to the in-person event that Zenimax is hosting. What exactly I will do there, I don't know. Should I make videos about the new content? Should I focus more on like what Zenimax was doing? Uh, should I focus on, you know, this is, hey, this is the, what the developers are saying. Maybe we get some information on the DL. Maybe I can slide on my application for the stream team. Maybe I can use this to keep non-combat pets off of the <laughs> daily login rewards. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And you already know that I'll catch you later. Bye, guys.